All right, in our previous uh, civic education video, and by the way, we're on 17 of 148, uh, will be done before your exams. So hang in there. I know your exams are in June, July, but will be done. So in our previous civic education lecture, we spoke about human rights. We gave a historical perspective of uh, human rights, um, you know, the origin of human rights and certain charters, and we gave a bit of definitions. And then we went on to the formation of the United Nations just after World War II and the declaration, you know, how to implement this. How can the United Nations implement human rights by the formation of a document or a charter known as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and you must know what it contains. For more of those details, please refer to the previous video. But for today, I want us to continue our discussion on human rights, and most specifically, we have to talk about the characteristics of human rights. So what makes human rights human rights? That's what we mean by characteristics, the specific identificatory features of human rights. So no wonder I was saying human rights have distinguishing features or traits or characteristics that set them apart from ordinary rights. And these include, the first thing is that they are, and I've been mentioning this about human rights being inherent. Inherent means just the fact that you're existing, you're a human being, you're born, they are intrinsic to you. So they are inherent. So this means uh, they are inborn and are, are birthright. So they are birthright. And uh, as long as we are born, like I was saying, as long as you are born, you are inherent, you, you have a certain amount of rights, just the fact that you are existing as a human being. And I think I mentioned this in our previous lecture when I said human beings are, are, are inalienable. Last time I said it means no one can take this away from you. Oh, wait, my Adobe Acrobat actually updated. I can annotate. Oh, cool. So this means uh, human rights are inalienable. Right, sorry about that. I just got too excited there discovering the fact that Adobe Acrobat has actually introduced uh, a pen feature, a, a pen feature, meaning I can draw using my graphics pad. So like I was saying, I said human rights are inalienable. Inalienable means and no one can take them away from you. So no one can take them away from you. So no one, okay, it sucks. So no one can take them away from you. I'll just use the highlighter, all right. So inalienable means no one has the right to take them away from you. So this means that human rights cannot be separated or taken away or given away. You cannot distribute human rights. Okay, so human rights are universal. So universal, like I said in the previous video, I like that um, we're using this word for human rights. Universal means regardless of whether you're on Earth, on Mars, or anywhere in the universe, as long as you're in the universe, you have those human rights. So human rights are universal, meaning all human beings enjoy these freedoms. A universal means they are followed and apply to all people around the world, not just the world, but even if you're not on this Earth, regardless of your race, sex, ethnicity, religion, political nationality, or social status. And again, like I said, this list is non-exhaustive. There are, although there are other categories, uh, it can be expanded. So human rights are indivisible and interdependent and interrelated. Wow, interesting, let's break this down. So human rights are um, indivisible, interdependent and interrelated. So means all rights are equally important and you know, right to freedom, right to, to, to good health, right to shelter. So all these are indivisible. You cannot divide them. They are interdependent and they are interrelated. So this means all human rights are equally important and cannot be divided or subtracted or removed from others. There is no ranking of these rights for all are equal. 
Hence, all rights should be enjoyed in totality. So human rights are individual. So let's just recap. So the first thing is that human rights are inherent. As long as you're a human being, you're going to have access to those human rights. Human rights are inalienable. No one can take them away from you. Human rights are universal. Regardless of where you are in the world, you have the right to enjoy these rights. Uh, human rights are indivisible, interdependent, interrelated. You cannot put a scale ranking of these human rights. Uh, all human rights are important in and of uh, themselves. So let's now go further and talk about the categories of human rights. So international human rights have been categorized into civil and political, uh, civil and political rights economic, social, and cultural rights, and uh, collective rights. So you find that there exists a ranking, like a first generation, meaning it, it, it was one of the first human rights that were, that were identified or recognized. So you have to be very careful in terms of when you're writing down your essay, you have to be very specific which one is first generation, which one is second generation, and which one is third generation. So the first generation is, you know, uh, the rights of state, the rights of citizenship. That's what we mean by civil and political rights. So this is classified as uh, first generation human rights because, like I said, they were first to be uh, recognized. Uh, these rights stress the freedom of the individual and urges governments not to interfere in the life of the individual. So inherent citizenship rights. As long as you are in the country, you are an independent citizen, recognized citizen of your country. No one has the right to, the government shouldn't come to interfere in your own personal life. Unless otherwise, if what you're doing is immoral. Uh, so this is an essay rich thing. So in 1996, uh, constitution of, uh, of the Constitution of Zambia, civil and political rights are found in part three and they include, so you have to know uh, which section of the Constitution uh, the Human Rights Act is, and it's in part three, and you have to know what it includes. So what I'm highlighting, uh, uh, what will make your essay rich, uh, civil and political rights, so rights to life, the rights to personal liberty, protection from slavery or forced labor, freedom from torture and inhuman treatment, freedom of opinion. We, we might have freedom of opinion or not, we, I don't know about that, but freedom of opinion, freedom of protection of conscience, freedom of expression, uh, protection of freedom of assembly, uh, ETC, uh, freedom from discrimination on grounds of race, uh, age, sex, your ethnic uh, background, your religion, among others, like I always say, this list is non-exhaustive. So if you want to summarize this essay, you can say, we do have a category known as civil and political rights, which are first generation, meaning they are first recognized, and in our constitution, they are found in act uh, number three or part number three. They include your basic essential human rights, a liberty protection from slavery. Then you can go on and say this, uh, this protection of freedom uh, is non-discriminatory uh, regardless of your race, age, sex, ethnicity, religion, among others. So please read, read, read. So let's move on to uh, something called the second generation, meaning the, uh, the next to be recognized. So these are economic, uh, social, and cultural rights. And uh, these consist of rights that, uh, rights that are economic, social, and cultural in nature. So they bring about you know, social justice, dignity, and equality when government creates good conditions to allow enjoyment of these rights. Uh, so let's uh, look at uh, an example. So, you know, food security in the country is very important. So the rights to food, uh, employment, social security, uh, education and health care. So all these are categorized as economic, social and uh, cultural rights. You know, you, you have the right to health care. Uh, 
when you're going to a government hospital to seek treatment, you know, healthcare has to be almost virtually free to a certain extent. You have the right to, uh, to education, you have the right to go to school and eventually the government giving you uh, a job because you are a taxpayer. The moment we're born, we're paying taxes until we die, even after we die, we are still paying taxes one way or another. So you all need these economic, social, and cultural rights. So let's move on to the last category of human uh, rights, which are the collective uh, rights, which are also known as the third generation. So these are certain rights that uh, exist as a, as a collective. Remember, rights are, are interconnected. So, uh, so uh, are the most, uh, these are the most recently recognized. Collective refers to those rights uh, of people being protected from attacks on their group of interest and identity. And let's look at this. So those rights of people to be protected uh, on their groups of interest and identity. The most collective right is the right of self-determination. These rights are expressed in uh, documents of international law. Uh, they include the, hmm, this, this is essay rich. So it, it, the fact that these, um, so practically these are saying uh, collective, meaning you are free to specify what type of uh, interest or group identity that you choose to. So I'm sure this applies to, um, uh, so they include the 1972 Stockholm Declaration of um, United Nations Conference on Human Rights and the 1992 uh, Rio Declaration on Environmental and Developmental and other soft laws, meaning they have not been uh, enacted into legally binding documents. So collective rights, uh, collective rights include um, uh, self-determination, economic and social development, uh, a health environment, natural resources, participation in cultural heritage, and also integration of equality and sustainability. So these rights Although not legally binding, they create a framework uh, for the enjoyment of all other rights. So these uh, are not that legally binding because we can choose to be in a social uh, identity. So they are most uh, sort of cultural and not sort of legally binding, but they do create a basis for all human rights. So we now go further and we have to talk about the significance of human rights. So the word significant means what makes human rights important. So what is the significance? What makes human rights important? So remember human rights focus on the dignity, meaning uh, honor, respect, and self-esteem and individual uh, individuals entitlement. So we have to look at um, so human uh, beings, thus each individual needs to develop certain attitudes to promote human rights. And these are, uh, one, respect for everyone's life, uh, their physical and mental integrity, freedom, uh, prosperity, and privacy. Mm. All right, so like I was saying, what is the significance of human rights, meaning what type of uh, attributes do these human rights create within the individual and in the society that that individual is living in. So respect for everyone's life, their physical, mental integrity, freedom, prosperity, and privacy, and privacy are respect for different sex, ethnicity, language, color, a religion, cultural uh, aspect, opinion, and the, and the identity of others and their own. So this uh, creates a sort of uh, mind your own business uh, uh, aspect within moral, uh, within moral limits. So taking up responsibility in, uh, taking up responsibility in society for rights come with responsibilities, especially that of respecting other people. So we have to respect other people. Respecting other people's rights 
for they are protected by the law and guaranteed by international standards. Remember when we said international standards, we are talking about um, all countries that are signed by the United Nations have to adhere to the standards of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Respecting other people's rights for they are protected by law, all right? So recognizing accountability and responsibility in relationship between the individual and the state. Uh, rights uh, holders have to be empowered. So uh, you, the citizens, you know, you are the one who holds the human rights and you have to be empowered. And empowerment means knowledge and skills. They need to make uh, um, claims of their rights. So if you're empowered, if you're knowledgeable, no one can come to you and say, ooh, 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 ooh and you know, uh, hoax you into uh, throwing you into jail because you, you know your human rights. So participation of both sexes and all ages is an important human right in all areas uh, of, their, of their lives. So this is a very huge, huge essay with at least uh, 30 points. You could at least know 15 or half. So the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, there are 30 articles which are agreed upon by representatives of the United Nations, uh, members, states with different populations and political systems. And they include, everyone is free and we should all be treated in the same way. Everyone is equal despite differences in skin color, sex, religion, or language background. Uh, most importantly, or uh, all these are important. Remember, these rights cannot be categorized. Uh, everyone has the right to life and to live in freedom and safety. No one has the right to treat you as a slave or should make um, anyone your slave. No one has the right to hurt you or to torture you. And well, remember, uh, after World War II, like I said in the previous video, there was a distinction between human rights and ethics because, you know, the Holocaust traumatized a lot of people. And so these rights are best off those uh, World War II um, horrific uh, crimes against humanity. Everyone has the right to be treated equally. The law is the same for everyone. It should, it should be applied in the same way to all. So this again, you know, sovereign states maintaining the rule of law, no one's above the law. Everyone has the right to ask for legal help when their rights are not respected. No one has the right to imprison you unjustly or expel you from your own country. In other countries, actually, you are legally protected in that before you are taken to court, you cannot say anything without a lawyer reviewing your case. Uh, in Zambia, you know, it's like police brutality. Uh, everyone has the right to a fair and public trial. Everyone should be considered innocent until proven guilty. We will talk about this more in detail later. Uh, we all have the right to privacy and protection. Everyone has the right to travel as they wish. No one can say martial law, you're not allowed to leave your country, you can travel at will. Uh, one, uh, unless in emergency situations where there is a state of emergency in a country or when there is nationwide, countrywide uh, lockdowns due to things like uh, viral infections, pandemics, one has the right to go to another country and ask for protection if they are being uh, prosecuted or in danger of being prosecuted. So a good example of a local thing that one can do is if I feel that I'm being attacked by the uh, Zambian government, I can simply run to any embassy and I will be protected in that embassy because the law of Zambia do not apply when you are in a specific embassy. Everyone has the right to be a citizen in one's own country or become a citizen of another country if one wishes to. So you can denounce your citizenship if you want to. Everyone has the right to marriage and have a family. 
everyone has the right to own property and possessions. Everyone has the freedom to belong to any religion. Everyone has the freedom of speech and opinion. Everyone has the right to organize meetings and join associations in a peaceful manner. You know, if you can, you can riot peacefully, you can demonstrate peacefully. No one should come saying, no, uh, you are promoting political parties, etc. Everyone has the right to participate in government and in free elections. Everyone has the right to social security and to opportunities to develop their skills. Everyone has the right to fair pay and to join labor unions. Everyone has the right to leisure and rest. Everyone has the right to food, housing, and medical uh, care. Everyone has the right to go to school, education. Everyone has the right to participate in cultural life of one's own country. Uh, we will have the right to social international uh, order that protects all rights to be available. Uh, everyone has the right to community duties, respect uh, the rights of others and public property. No one has the right to take away uh, the rights uh, in this declaration. So please, when we're talking about um, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and they say, uh, write an essay about this, you have to give a brief historical background and you also have to state the preamble uh, how it was implemented, and you also have to uh, give some form of brief list of uh, at least even 10 or 15. Do not say these are 30, I can guess something that's correct. You are going to fail. Examiners are very, very specific. If something is in the notes, they want you to say that something that's in the notes. You cannot guess here. So I urge you to at least know 15 of these by heart. Sentence for sentence, word for word, by heart, know these things. Because you're not going to go there and say, no, civic education is general knowledge. I will just guess. That will not work. Heed my advice. So that's the end uh, on our topic on human rights. But uh, let's, let's try moving on. Uh, to maybe talk a little bit about uh, corruption, I just give a little um, a brief introduction because because you know corruption has huge social and economical effects. So corruption is defined as giving money. It's not only money, but something of value or rendering of a service to someone in return of a favor involving the abuse of public office and resources for personal gain. So here, when it comes to corruption, there are two people involved. One who has um, something of, va of value, money or other possessions, and another one who has, who, who has some authority. So someone who has authority, someone who has the will to manipulate certain things, and someone who has money. So there are two or more, there are two major parties involved. Someone who's asking for a favor, someone who can grant that wish. It's like a genie in a bottle kind of situation, but involving money. So there are certain forms of corruption. So there are different forms of corruption and they involve uh, human rights violation and the lack of transparency and accountability in the use of public uh, resources uh, and authority. So let's try to categorize. So uh, here we, we can have uh, the, uh, the following are the forms of corruption. So cash payment and you, you know you make and receive you 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 pay someone and you receive that that remuneration so cash payment and receipts is the most common form of corruption this involves giving or accepting money in return for a favor by a public officer so mostly these are government officials because you know in the private uh, private sector uh, usually favoritism is not all that much because they have integrity of their work, but for government sector, you know, maybe uh, they are not getting that much employment benefit, so you find a lot of this uh, 
cash payment and receipt sort of corruption. Uh, let's look at kickback. So kickback involves a rendering of a service in return of a favor by a public office. So this is more of an I owe you. I'm not going to give you the money directly, but I owe you a favor one way or another. So let's look at uh, payment in kind, <laughs> payment in kind. So this is uh, where one demands for a favor or for an action to be done. So this is actually very, uh, this definition has actually been censored, but when someone says payment in kind, it usually involves something physical and something that is sexual in nature. So if someone says, oh, I can pay you in kind, it means you, there will be some form of uh, sexual act being done in this type of uh, uh, corruption. So loans and advances involve corrupt uh, payments in form of a loan or an advance. Such action is categorized by misuse of public office for personal gain. So commissions, so these are given as an appreciation fee for an awarding uh, for awarding a contract so you can say all right if this contract pulls through i'll give you five percent uh, of the money that will gain from this uh, contract so i think i don't want to go any further because it will be hard for me to upload this video if it's any uh, bigger so we're going to end here we're doing well so two four six eight ten so i've, I've approximately five to six sessions will be done with this entire book and you'll be ready for your revision. So please uh, study. I will see you in the next class.